better. But that, of course, is for subsequent discussion. Now, I would like now to turn to Grigory Avlinsky, professor and political leader from Russia. We have to come back to, to Europe and Russia and to learn how do the questions of reforms in Russia look today. I mean, there was a period in the 90s when this whole situation was the biggest drama on earth, I think, with uh, shock therapy, with uh, critical and very quick, profound changes, and then subsequent development which was of a mixed nature. But where are we now? What is likely to happen in the near future? Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much. It's uh, really my pleasure to be with you and to speak about serious issues of economic developments and economic reforms. But to make long story short, I would say when you mentioned uh, shock therapy, I would say in Russian case it was a shock without therapy. It was simply a terrible shock, that's it. Now we have uh, consequences of that shock. Because I, uh, I want to intrigue you a little bit and say that the main cause of the uh, events which you can observe in Russia now, first of all, the war with Ukraine, have its roots in the reforms, how they were realized in the 90s, exactly what you mentioned. Uh, let's, uh, a small observation about democracy from the point of view of economy. I'm going to speak from the practical side of this issue. For, to have, it's, it's, of course it's not enough what I'm going to say, but this is the preconditions without which the even discussions and talks about democracy have no substance. First of all, democracy in the modern world is possible only if you have a private property in the country. This is the point number one. Secondly, to have the precondition for democracy, you must have competition between the different groups and private property entities. Thirdly, and this is extremely important, to have independent flows of financial resources. Without these three preconditions, democracy in the modern world, in European country, or even, I think, in the whatever country, simply is not possible. Now, in Russia, we had uh, systemic changes, but the outcome of the systemic changes is that these systemic changes didn't brought to Russia middle class. There is no real, real middle class in the country. Secondly, we have no independent media. Thirdly, we have no independent justice. We have no independent civil society groups and civil society as it must be. We have no independent uh, trade unions. And certainly we have a very weak political parties because there is no independent financing, there is no independent media and so on and so on, and there is no independent justice. In that environment you can't create anything like democracy. Now, what happens? Happens the replacement of the institutions of market economy by corruption and oligarchy. Corruption and oligarchy is also institution, but the, the institution of different nature. And this institution of different nature brought the country today, if you would ask me what, what is the system today we have in Russia, is a corporative state with the authoritarian political system. So this is no surprise that when the corporative says with the authoritarian political system have a substantial uh, financial flow from the uh, high prices on oil and other natural resources, you can have the situation like what we have at the moment with Ukraine in the country. So what are the lessons? There are serious lessons from that. The first lesson is that if you are making systemic changes, 
you must first of all think about creation of legitimate private property. This is not a case to make it fast or to make it by all means. You must create that kind of private property in the country, especially big private property, huge companies, which would create the confidence among the population that this is a really private owners. This is extremely, uh, I would say, extremely important thing. Secondly, very important during the systemic changes, the question not only what are you doing, but also how you are doing that. If you are implementing the uh, way of doing the reform, uh, so to say that the goals justify the means, at the end of that story you would have opposite result of what you want to establish. This is one of the most dangerous approaches when uh, realpolitik is a domination theory and you are making reforms as we did in the middle of 90s. Uh, goal is justifying the means. Thirdly, for the countries which have natural resources, on the first pl place for the reforms must be not the macroeconomic stabilization, privatization, and the things which are coming from Washington consensus. For the country with the natural resources, on the first place must be institutions. Institutions, number one, mean, meaning independent justice. This is the priority. Divisions of powers. Confidence of the people. This is the key issue. And certainly private property rights. Certainly private property rights. The macroeconomic policy like Privatization, liberalization, stabilization is also very important. But this is the second package. The first package is institutional changes. Now, uh, the natural developments without regulations always creates the oligarchy. Oligarchy is now kind of a disease all over the world, not only in Russia. But in Russia, for example, it has an extreme dimension. Simply, it's a completely coinciding property and the state power. They are all going together. In that, in that situation, you have no transparency. And you have no independent financial resources in the country. Now, very important issue. In every country, especially in Russia, all systemic changes must be in the context of the history of this country. The, the fact that Russian reform, reformers, so-called reformers, rejected the very important issue of rethinking the Russian history in the 20th century, first of all, Stalinism, terror of Stalinism, and Soviet period, now we are paying a very high price. Trying to put the all periods of history of the nation all together, creating the idea that they are not contradictive to each other, is a wrong idea. And now we can see this. So the cultural context and historical context of reform in every country must be respected very highly. And of course, last but not least, uh, one of the most complicated uh, side of the systemic changes is to try to keep in the, in the highest priority of the systemic changes what happened to the human being in the country. What happened with the ordinary man from the street? What is the influence on him? And that means that you need not simply to uh, realize the reform 
like a military operation, you should have a dialogue with the society. And if the dialogue is long, it's not a problem. The problem is to make the reforms without dialogue. You would pay a very high price at the end if the society would not accept this reform. And the developments would be very, very dangerous. So, as a conclusion, Russia had a very deep systemic economic changes. But the outcome of this is just opposite to the goal which was at the very beginning. And we must understand the lessons of that. And we should teach these lessons because sooner or later we have to start the reforms again. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>